Good day, this is Lynette from Avisho Ministries. We are continuing with our deliverance manual today. Uh, we are going to continue with chapter 7 and it is called What are Demons? We cannot cast our demons without knowing who they are and what their purpose is and so we do go to scriptures for an idea of what demons are. The truth, however, is there is no real answer to what a demon is. Some will argue they were not created separately to angels, but they were angels who rebelled. You can, however, say according to both theories, they are invisible spiritual entities in league with and under the control of Satan. They are out to do his bidding and to torment the people of God. The Bible tells us the Lord created the angels as perfect and righteous beings, created all at once. These spiritual beings, along with Lucifer, Satan, had freedom to accept or reject worship of God. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His hosts. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded and they were created. He also established them forever and ever psalm 148 verse 2 it is however true that when the angels were created they were called the sons of god because they were a direct creation of god adam like the angels is called a son of the god of god because he was the first person created luke 338 adam like the angels is called the son of god no sorry angels were created at the foundation of the earth so there is the theory that once Satan led the rebellion against God's throne, according to the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, that these angels rejected God's authority and became fallen, or demons as they are called. Therefore, as the argument goes, God did not create demons, but God created angels with free will who will choose to reject him, thus become uh, becoming demons. By all accounts, it's could be that demons are thus the host of angels that followed Satan out of hell. Revelations 12 His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth, and a dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth, to devour her child as soon as it was born. Angels were referred to as the stars of heaven, and Satan is often referred to as the morning star because it shines brighter than all the others, other stars but disappears at night. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Revelations 12.9 However, according to two passages in scriptures, there might be a problem with this theory. It says the following, 2 Peter 2, verse 4, For if God did not spare the angels, um, Uh, sorry, who, is shan who, who sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Jude 6, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. According to Peter and Jude, the angels cannot be demons because they are already held captive under the day of judgment. This contradicts the daily workings of demons. And then you have the conundrum of Genesis 6. If we argue that the angels have already been bound and cannot be demons, when men began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair, and they took wives of all they desired and chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not forever dwell and strive with man, for he also is flesh, but his day shall be hundred and twenty years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God lived with the daughters of men, and they were uh, bore children to them. These were... Um, 
These were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination and intention of all human thinking was only evil continually. It could also be said that if we study the writings of Peter and Judge, um, the angels were only bound for uh, judgment after they, as the sons of God, chose to sin against the Lord by corrupting mankind. If we go back to 2 Peter 2, there is also the argument that indeed angels are demons because they are not bound in a place called hell until day of judgment, but they are simply restricted on earth. Hell in 2 Peter is Tartaru, a place of restraint for the wicked. Though Satan himself may appear before God's throne in heaven, he and his demons can do only what God allows. Job 1 verse 6 to 12. So we have the theory that when Satan and his angels fell, that God placed restrictions on their powers and limited them to their proper domain or first estate, that is, the, that is earth. Here they await their judgment for their rebellion. So the argument holds water that angels can be demons because they, their hell is for now earth. In Greek mythology, Tartarus was the lowest hell, the place where the titans who rebelled against Zeus were restrained. It is described as being as far below Hades as heaven is high above the earth. As far as we can apply Greek mythology, we can understand that these angels were caused so far down as to be out of sight. Their place of restraint was so far down that one would think they would never be able to crawl out. The earth then is a place of restraint, a prison for demons for fallen angels. But there is also the theory that angels are not fallen angels but were created separately by God and these creatures dwell in an earth which is called the abyss or hell. Demons take on all kinds of forms so the idea is that angels cannot take on such an appearance. Let us look for example at Revelations 9 that in a way supports the idea that beyond angels God also created other creatures that are now demons. Then the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth, and to the angel was given the key of the shaft of the abyss, the bottomless pit. He opened the long shaft of the abyss, the bottomless pit, and smoke, like the smoke of a huge furnace, puffed out of the long shaft, so that the sun and the atmosphere were darkened by the smoke from the long shaft. Then out of the smoke locusts came. Uh, sorry came forth on the earth and such power was granted them as the power the earth scorpions have. They were told not to injure the herbage of the earth nor any green thing nor any tree but only to attack such human beings as do not have the seal or the mark of God on their foreheads. They were not permitted to kill them but to torment or distress or vex them for five months. And the pain caused them was like the torture of a scorpion when it stings a person. And in those days people will seek death and will not find it. And they will yearn to die, but death evades and flees from them. The locust resembles horses equipped for battle. On their heads was something like golden crowns. Their faces resembled the faces of people. They had hair like the hair of women, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. Their breastplate scales resembled breastplates made of iron, and the whirring noise made by their wings was like the roar of a vast number of horse-drawn chariots going at full speed into battle. They have tails like scorpions, and they have stings in their tails like their ability to hurt men for the five months. Over them as, as king they have the angel of the abyss of the bottomless pit, in Hebrew, his name is Abaddon, um, the, the demon of destruction, but in Greek he is called Apollyon, destroyer. So out of the abyss came these terrible creatures that follow their king, which is Satan. Is it then possible that demons are then separate creatures? And then there is a third theory. It goes that there were two different rebellions, one being Satan leading the one-third of angels to try to usurp God's authority and the second rebellion involving the watchers. 
It is theorized that the Watchers, also angels, were not a part of Satan's rebellion. They created their own rebellion against God by deciding to leave their first estate, which was heaven, and go to the earth to collaborate with human women, or cohabitate. cohabitate. The theory is supported by the writings of Enoch. There are those who support the writings of Enoch's, Enoch, wondering why it is not part of the modern-day scriptures. Enoch speaks about the rebellion of the watchers, the angels assigned to watch over and guard over the earth. It says in chapter 6, And it came to pass, when the children of men had multiplied, that in those days were born unto them beautiful and, and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them, and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wise from among these children of men, and beget as children. And Simeazah, who was their leader, said unto them, Enoch then continues to dis discuss the deal he made with fellow watchers to all commit the same sin. In verse 7 it says that there were 200 chiefs on the summit of Mount Hermon, which is located on the border of Lebanon and Syria and stands over 9,000 feet high. They agreed to come to earth and cohabitate with women. These 200 chiefs were each in charge of 10,000 of other watchers. It then continues in chapter 7. And all the other together with them, this indicates their armies that follow them, took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them, and do defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments, and cutting off roots, and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant, and they bare great giants, uh, whose height was three thousand ells who consumed all the um, acquisitions of men, and when men could not longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they became to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood, um, a cannibalism. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them in bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all two colouring tinctures. And there arose much godlessness and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. Semyaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. Armaros, the resolving of enchantments. Barakyal uh, taught astrology. Kokobel, the constellations. Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds. Arakil, the signs of the earth. Shamsil, the signs of the sun. And Sariel, the cause of the moon. And as men perished, they cried and they cry went up to heaven. In chapter 9. And then Michael, Uriel, Raphael, Gabriel, and Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed upon the earth, and all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said to one another, The earth made without inhabitant cries the voice of their cryings up to the gates of heaven. And now to you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men make their suit, saying, Bring our cause before the Most High. And they said to the Lord of the ages, Lord of lords, God of gods, King of kings and God of the ages, throne of the glory, standeth unto all generations of the ages, and thy name holy and glorious and blessed unto all the ages. Thou hast made all things, and power over all things hast thou, and all things are naked and open in thy sight, and thou seest all things, and nothing can hide itself from thee. Thou sees what Azazel hath done, who has taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven, um, which men were striving to learn. And Semyaza, to whom thou hast given authority to, to bear rule over his associates, and they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth, and have slept with the women, and have defiled themselves and revealed to them all kinds of sins. And the women have borne giants, and the whole earth has thereby been filled uh, with blood and unrighteousness. 
And now behold, the souls of those who have died are crying and making their suits to the gates of heaven, and their lamentations have ascended, and cannot cease because of the lawless deeds which are wrought on the earth. Thou knowest all things before they come to pass, and thou seest these things, and thou dost suffer them. And thou dost say to us what we are to do to them in regard to these. In chapter 15 deals with the judgment of the watchers and also about the rise of the evil spirits or the demons. And he answered and said to me, and I heard his voice, Fear not, Enoch, thou righteous man, and scribe of the righteous approach, hither and hear my voice, and go and say to the watchers of heaven, who have sent thee to intercede for them. You should intercede for men, and not men for you. Wherefore you have you left the high, holy, and eternal heaven, and lain with women, and defiled yourselves with the daughters of men, and taken to yourself wives, and done like the children of the earth, and begotten giants as your sons. And though you were holy, spiritual, living the eternal life, you have defiled yourselves with the blood of women, and have begotten children with the blood of flesh. And as the children of men have lusted of the flesh and blood, as those also do die and perish, therefore have I given them wives also that they might impregnate them, and beget children by them, that thus do not might be wanting to the, uh, them on earth, but you were formerly spiritual, living the eternal life, and immortal for all generations of the earth. And therefore I have not appointed wives for you, for as for the spiritual ones of the heaven, in heaven is their dwelling. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on the earth shall they be dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men, and from the holy watches is their beginning and primal origin. They shall be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits shall be they called. As for the spirits of heaven, in the heaven shall they be dwelling, but as for the spirits of the earth, which were born upon the earth, on the earth shall they be their dwelling. And the spirit of the giants afflicts, oppress, destroys, attack, do battle, and work destruction on the earth, and cause trouble. They take no food, but nevertheless hunger and thirst, and cause offences. And these spirits have rise up against the children of men, and against the women, because they have proceeded from them. So there is thus the theory that according to Enoch, demons is the offspring of watchers who were the imprisoned. According to 2 Peter 2 and Jude, these demons are thus known as the Nephilim. Nephilim means violent, causing to fall, to wander, prodigies or monsters. Thus demons are a result of the first watchers rebelling against the Lord. They came unto earth, impregnated human women and produced giant offspring. God then destroyed the world with flood to get rid of them. However, it did not stop the rebellion. We find in scriptures after the flood, we find references to other giants such as Goliath. Number 30, Numbers 13 verse 33. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Deuteronomy 2 verse 19 in the New King James Version, And when you come near the people of Ammon, do not harass them or meddle with them. Uh, sorry. For I will not give you any of the land of the people of Ammon as a possession, because I have given it to the descendants of Lot as a possession that was also regarded as a land of giants. Giants formerly dwelt there, but the Ammonites called them Zamzumim a people as great as numerous and tall as the Anakim. Deuteronomy 2.10 The Emim had dwelt there in times past, a people as great as numerous and tall as the Anakim. They were also regarded as giants like the Anak Anak Anakim, but the Moabites called them Emim. Deuteronomy 3.11 For only Och, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of the giants. Indeed, his uh, bedstead was an iron bedstead. Is it not in Rabbah of the people of Ammon? Nine cubits is its length and four cubits its width, according to the standard cubit. Joshua 17, for Joshua answered them, If you are a great people, then go to the forest 
uh, country and clear a place for yourself there in the land of the Perizzites and the giants, since the mountains of Ephraim are too confined for, for you. Excuse me. There is the idea that when fallen angels shapeshift into human form, they can have intercourse, but not without some aberrant generic changes. The union of these beasts were human but Produced, uh, produced children that were different in many ways. The first apparent difference was that they developed giantism. The aberrant genetic defects of the Nephilim were then cloned into the DNA of mankind. These dormant generic tendencies still surface today at times in different people. However, most of the noticeable DNA defect defects have been perfected over the centuries to where hybrids can easily be born into a society that never suspects them of being other than completely human. Thus, the offspring giants never went out of existence. They just went underground to return later, which is now during these last days. Whatever our point of view, what is important is to remember that demons are real and they are lethal in their work. If they are fallen angels or created separately, it doesn't really matter. They follow Satan and they have a plan of destruction. Sadly, many Christians have allowed Satan to deceive them into believing one of two major lies, that he and his demons don't exist or that he and his demons are too powerful for Christian believers. Option A is a lie and so is option B. Demons are real but so is the authority in the name of Jesus to drive out such demons from people. In Job 1 we read, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them. Job lived after the days of Adam and Eve so he lived in a time that the angels had already fallen. Here we read how the angels, including Lucifer, came to God and God challenged him to Job's loyalty. This is then how the story of Job unfolds. What is, what is interesting is that Satan clearly has not, no qualm about being in God's presence. He even appeared before the Son of God, Jesus, in the wilderness. Uh, talk about arrogance. Angels and demons are thus eternal beings like humanity. There are no more angels being created today. They were created once at the foundation of the earth. The same number exists today as existed in the beginning. If fallen angels are demons, the fact remains their eternity and in the, is the lake of fire to be tormented eternally. If the de demons are created separately, they will also burn. Let us remember that demons or evil spirits are opposed to God and God's people. Demons are the spiritual beings without physical form. Demons are not the spirits of dead men as some argue, nor are demons merely personification of, of evil or of the natural forces such as the gods of nature, as skeptics assume. Demons simply are corrupted beings, if fallen angels or as separate creations. Demons are set in their ways and have no opportunity for redemption. The term demon comes from the Greek de daemon, or more correctly, demon, neon, uh, which is translated devil in the King, King James Version, New Testament. The word means divine or supernatural power. The word is associated with the power of a divine being inferior to God. The Hebrew word refers to something which is hairy and of the nature of a male goat buck. The Hebrew concept in scripture is that demons were the, uh, the inspiration behind men turning to idols. The corrupted beings were being worshipped through idols. They shall no more offer their sacrifices to demons after whom they have played the harlot. This shall be a stat statute forever for them throughout their generations. Leviticus 17 Demons are found in the New Testament as being able to possess people. Matthew 8, Mark 5 and animals, Matthew 8, they are very strong in Mark 5. They are also called unclean spirits, Luke 8. They have a hierarchy of rulership in their demonic realm, Matthew 12, Ephesians 6, and can have sacrifices offered to them, 1 Corinthians 10. Also, they will be judged in the future, Matthew 8. They cannot be redeemed. 
Thus demons, they will eventually be cast forever in the lake of fire, Revelations 20. This may explain why they responded to Jesus with fear and derision. For example, what do I have to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God, Mark 5, 7 and Luke 4? And have you come to torment us before our time, Matthew 8? These evil angels are morally corrupted spirits who are in rebellion against God. In John 8, Peter 2 and James 2, Jude 1. Their rebellion was led by Satan, John 3, Matthew 12, and Ezekiel 28. As a result, they have become destructive, self-centered creatures who seek to thwart the purposes of God and Christ. Deuteronomy 32 and Psalm 106, 1 Peter 5, verse 8, Ephesians 6, and so on. 1 Timothy 4, you can please read them. Paul recognized demonic forces and referred to them as principalities, Romans 8 verse 38, and said that we struggle against them, Ephesians 6. He speaks of them in the heavenly places, but this does not mean heaven where God is, but the upper area above the earth. One of the demon's principal ploys is to deceive people through false religion or deceptive miracles, and thereby blind people to spiritual truth. 2 Corinthians 4, Acts 26, Corinthians 11, Thessalonians 2. However, it must never be forgotten that Satan and demons are only creatures who are ultimately constrained by the sovereign power and purposes of God. When needed, the believer has power over them because Christ himself was victorious over Satan at the cross. Jesus proved his complete power over demons, often casting them out of people as he commanded his disciples to do the same. Demons have, no, uh, have more power and influence than most people may realize. Demons are cunning and sly. They can even imitate good angels and express great concern for people's welfare. They give false visions and revelations in dreams. They can possess people and they can perform various miracles, cause insanity or cause murder to be committed. They can produce various physical ailments, sicknesses or mental torments. They can predict the future. Uh, although in a limited capacity subject to God's sovereignty. Encourage occult practices, manipulate the human mind by impressing thoughts, ideas or images, and they can influence nature. They can even assume physical form at will, from human to child, animal to mythological creature. They seek our worship and to pervert God's ways. In the end, however, they destroy people's lives. Demons entice, harass, manipulate, influence, destroy, and deceive. This is all done under the authority of Satan, who is the father of lies. Demons seek to inhabit humans, for while they are roaming earth, they seek to find a host through which they exert their influence and thus sow destruction and chaos. Satan is a ruler of this world, it says in 2 Corinthians 2, but even if our gospel is veiled. It is veiled for those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. And also John 14, and now I have told you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Satan rules this world, for this is his domain, and this is where he, allow, he is allowed to roam. We see this in the story of Job, when God asked him where he was, and the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from the walking back and forth on it. Earth is in Satan's grasp, until he is cast first in the abyss for a thousand years, and then in the lake of fire. God gives Satan the right and what he did in the case of Job to roam the world and to influence. Ultimately, man has a free will and must uh, make a choice to listen to the devil or to listen to God. We see demon, demons continued intent to sow deception in 1 Timothy 4. The Spirit clearly says that in the latter days some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. <clears throat> or doctrines taught by demons. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars 
whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. Demons are here to stay until the devil and his cohorts are cast into the lake of fire, which is the spiritual realm that is known as hell. Revelations 20 says, And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great chain. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him, to keep him from deceiving the nations any more until the thousand years were ended. After that he must be set free for a short time. When the thousand years are over, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth, Choch and Machoch, the, the, to gather them for battle. In number they are like the sand on the seashore. They march across the breadth of the earth and surround the camp of God's people, the, the city he loves. But fire came down from heaven and devoured them, and the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night, for ever and ever. We need to be con con uh, continuously aware of the activities of demons. They are dangerous, powerful and cunning, but hold no power over those who are under the blood of Jesus Christ. For those who walk in God's authority, they have authority of the, fall, of, of the fallen angels. However, even if we are under the blood, it doesn't mean demons won't leave us alone. They will keep harassing and tormenting us for the purpose that we forsake God. In fact, they will try harder with a believer, for a non-believer is already in the camp of Satan. Satan and his cohorts want to drag people with them to the abyss and into the lake of fire, which will, uh, will their domain of captivity be forever. Revelations 20 says, Then I saw a great white throne, and he who is seated on it. Earth and sky fled from his presence, and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and the death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what he had done. Then death and Hades had, uh, were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Yet for those who seek the Lord, their dominion will be the new Jerusalem. Revelations 22. Sorry. Uh, Revelation 22. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those who na whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The eternal domain for the children of God will be to be in the presence of God, but those who have sought Him not will be dwelling in the domain of the fallen angels, and this is sat Satan's strategy to get us to dwell with Him in eternal doom and despair. Matthew 24, when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will gather before Him, and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did 
we see you are hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink. When that you see a stranger and invite you or uh, needing clothes and clothe you, when that we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you, the king will reply, tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Apart from me, you are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me. I, need, I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry and thirsty, and needing clothes, or sick or in prison? And we did not help you, and he will reply, tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of these, least of these, you did not do for me. Then I will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Matthew 24 shows that those judged unfit for eternal life will be thrown into the lake of fire. When cast into the lake of fire, these people will go through what God defines as the second death from which there is no resurrection. Notice, but the fearful and the unbelieving and abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all the liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death, Revelation 21. Let it again be noted according to Revelation 20 that after the thousand years, and Satan's brief spell on earth in the great judgment will come. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done, as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and the death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them. And each person was judged according to what he had done. The death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Everyone who had died and who was already in Hades, including the false prophet and the beast, were to also appear before God for the great day of judgment. Verse 15 is then clear. If anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. God's judgment will prevail. It should be noted that we can never judge a person's spiritual state of salvation. Only God will make that call. Who knows what will happen to Judas or the false prophet. Before the great judgment there was the honor bestowed upon those who had stood with God during the reign of Satan, the false prophet and the beast out of the earth and sea. Revelations 20, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus, and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their fore, uh, foreheads and their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the day... They did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power, power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ that will reign with him for a thousand years. After this event, when the multitude had survived the great persecution and tribulation, coming the great judgment and the second death, which is the lake of fire indeed, blessed are those whose names are in the book of life, for they taste no second death. And this lake of fire, as Matthew 24 says, is prepared for the devil and his angels. This is why we need to set people free from spiritual bondages and the bondages of the soul, so that we may be for eternity be in the presence and in the glory of the Almighty God. When it is all said and done, when we appear before God, our names need to be in the book of life. Satan will do everything in his power to make sure our names are not in that book and that he can own. That is all for today. This is where we are going to stop for today. Thank you so much for listening. We will continue next week. Uh, we will continue with the deliverance manual. We will talk about demonic oppression. Thank you so much for each one who joined us. I pray that you will be blessed and that uh, God will protect you 
and that we will meet again next week. Thank you so much for listening and tuning into Lighthouse Radio. God bless you.